Hello and welcome back to my garage. I'm Jeremy and today I'm going to show you how to wire up a starter circuit into any vehicle you want. That includes the neutral safety switch and I'm going to show you how to wire a Ford starter relay, otherwise known as a starter solenoid, in place of a regular starter circuit. So let's get started. So to start off with, let's go over all the components on the board. I'll tell you what they are and then after that we'll show you how to wire it. Now this right here is obviously the starter. Most starters are wired this exact same way. This one happens to be from a Mitsubishi, but you can pretend it's from any car you want because most of them are wired this way. Unless it has a separate starter relay, otherwise known as a starter solenoid. Some of the older Fords had this. In fact, a lot of the old Fords had this. These relays were shaped in a little different ways, but they all were separate from the starter itself. Right here, we have a neutral safety switch. Now these things come in a bunch of different shapes and sizes. This one happens to be from like a B&M ratchet style shifter, but these things are sometimes found on the steering column, sometimes in a console, sometimes down on the transmission itself. But this is like the simplest version. You'll see these used a lot in aftermarket shifters. This right here is obviously your ignition switch. We only have two wires going to it today. The rest are not hooked up because they're just not necessary for the starter circuit. Right here is the power wire that goes to the ignition switch. Obviously it has a fuse in it. This normally would be like a fuse box because you'll have a fuse box under your dashboard or under your hood that will power up your ignition switch. And then the power goes out your ignition switch to various other components. This right here is a mega fuse. It doesn't just have an awesome name. It actually serves a really important purpose. Now a ton of old cars just had a battery cable that went right from the, the positive battery terminal to the starter. And that is actually really unsafe because if the wire was to chafe on an exhaust manifold or an inner fender or something like that and ground itself out, you could easily light the car on fire and that's not ideal. So I'm a firm believer that all circuits should be protected by some sort of fuse or fusible link. And in this case, I went with a mega fuse. Now this is a Ford starter relay. Normally these are mounted to the inner fender of a truck or sometimes a car. And these are some wires and stuff that I'm going to use to make it work in place of what's already here. Now, these things were used for a variety of reasons um, in a lot of old cars and trucks, mostly Fords, although other manufacturers did do it as well. And it was a separate starter relay in place of the one that's right here. And it was also used as a junction block. And it's actually really great to have under your hood because you can just jump these two terminals together and you can get your starter to kick over. And then of course, right here, we have the black ground wire. Normally, the starter will be grounded through the engine block, and then you have a wire coming from your engine block back to your battery. Um, and then over here, we have the positive cable that would obviously come right off your battery. Okay, now let's talk about how this is actually wired and why it's wired this way. So let's start off with the big fat cable that goes to the starter. We have the battery. This is the positive battery terminal. It goes through a fuse. You want your fuse to be as close to your battery as possible because you don't want any unprotected circuits under your hood or in your car. So the shorter this wire is, the better it is for the circuit because then you only have this distance of wire that's unprotected by a fuse. Everything after the fuse is protected if something goes wrong. So the mega fuse comes next and the mega fuse is just protecting this long wire that goes all the way from your battery down to your starter. Then you have it go all the way down and it goes to one of the large terminals on your starter. Now the starter usually has two terminals on the starter solenoid or the starter relay, depending on what you want to call it. And one of those terminals actually jumps over to the motor itself. So this is the motor, this is the solenoid, and then down in here is like starter relay uh, section. So the terminal that doesn't have a big fat wire going to the motor is the one that you want your battery cable going to. And then separately, you have a small wire, and this small wire is what actually tells the starter to turn on. So the big wire is what powers it, the little wire is what tells it to turn on or off. So now the small wire that goes to the ignition switch, this is the signal to turn the starter on or off. And it comes in from the battery, goes through a fuse, actually it's probably a fuse box in your car. It goes to your ignition switch to power up the ignition switch. Normally you have a whole bunch of wires coming out of the ignition switch, but those don't go to the starter circuit, so we're only going to use the starter circuit today. So the power comes into the ignition switch, then it goes out the ignition switch to a neutral safety switch. Now the neutral safety switch is just a switch that opens and closes. It's super simple. And if you turn the key, 
Without the neutral safety switch being closed, then nothing is going to happen. You can turn this key all day long as hard as you want and nothing's going to happen. But as soon as you close this switch and connect the yellow wire to the blue wire, then the power goes from the ignition switch through the neutral safety switch and into your starter. So if we close this and turn the key, you'll see the starter turns on. But as soon as you let go, now you get nothing. Now the neutral safety switch is obviously just protecting the car from starting in gear because you don't want the car to start up in gear and then drive away on you. You only want it to start when it's in park or neutral and that's when the switch is closed typically on a shifter. If your shifter is in park, this is closed. If, it's shift, if you shift it into neutral, this is closed. But any other gear, this is going to be open and therefore when you turn the key, nothing's going to happen. Okay, so now let's switch the circuit over to use this starter relay instead of the one that's built into this starter and I'll show you how that works. So we now have the Ford starter relay hooked up and you can see I basically just moved wires around. I added a couple wires, but it's not a major change to the circuit. A lot of people call these starter solenoids, by the way. So if, you, if you're searching for one on the internet or you're at a parts store, some people call them starter solenoids, some people call them starter relays. I think technically it is a relay. So let's go over the wiring differences. I added a small ground wire to this relay because this relay grounds through the bracket that it mounts with. So normally it's bolted into an inner fender or something like that, some part of the chassis, and it grounds through this plate. But since I'm hooked up to a plastic board, I obviously needed to add a ground wire to this metal plate. The main battery cable now comes in and it goes to this side of the starter relay. And then there's an output wire on this side that goes down to the starter. We still use the same blue wire coming in from the neutral safety switch to actually activate the relay. This is basically just telling the relay to turn on or off. As soon as it gets 12 volts, the relay will kick on and it will jump power from this side of the relay to this side of the relay. The last change is right here. When you're using a starter that has a starter relay built into it and you're using a separate starter relay, you have to jump the main battery terminal to this small terminal for it to work. So the reason that we have to jump the big wire to the little wire is because we only have one wire going to the starter now. Instead of having this blue wire from the neutral safety switch go down to this small terminal, now we're just jumping the power from the big terminal to the little terminal. So anytime this big wire has power, it tells the starter relay and solenoid to actually have power as well. Now it may seem crazy to have a starter relay here and a starter relay here, but there's actually several benefits to it. So let's go back in history for a second. Now, when this relay was originally put in cars, these starter relay and solenoid combinations didn't exist in those cars. It was just a big fat starter motor that had a big honking wire going to it, and anytime this thing was activated, it spun the motor, and then the Bendix drive in it would actually kick the starter gear out like this. So the starter actually does two things. It pushes the gear out and it spins the gear so it connects to your flywheel. And then as soon as it's not energized anymore, the starter gear pulls back. So then over time, companies started switching over to this style starter, which has the solenoid, which kicks out the gear, and the relay, which activates the whole thing. And this became the norm. Strangely, Companies still used this style starter with this style relay for a period of time, so you actually had two starter relays in place. And in those scenarios, you have to jump the big wire to the little wire to actually activate the starter relay and solenoid. So another benefit to having one of these under the hood is that if you're constantly working on your car, or you have a race car or something like that, and you want to uh, check your, your valve lash or your timing or something like that, you can easily jump these two terminals together and you can start up the car from under your hood. So you'll notice I'm not touching the key or the neutral safety switch, and I just have a pair of pliers here. And if I jump these two terminals together, that starter is going to turn on, as you can see. So all you're doing is sending power to the solenoid and telling the solenoid to turn on. And it's just really nice to have this under the hood because it allows you to control the starter really easily. You could use a screwdriver, a pair of pliers, anything metal basically. You can jump right across here and it'll bump the starter for you. 
A lot of people will tell you that if you have a big block Chevy engine and you're having starting issues when it's hot, if you switch to this style circuit, you may fix your actual hot starting problems because now you have less of a voltage drop in this wire here. You have all this power coming through your battery cable and jumping right to here instead of having this super long wire coming from your neutral safety switch and basically running right next to your exhaust manifold to where it's super hot. Another great benefit to having a starter relay under your hood is that it's a great junction block. So basically you can grab power from this and send it over to a fuse box right next to it and then you can have a nice fuse box right next to it powering up whatever you want under your hood. Now you might also be asking what's this other terminal for? And the other terminal right here is normally used to go over to your ignition coil uh, on like a carbureted engine. It provides 12 volts to the coil when the engine is starting and then as soon as you let off the key and the engine's running this thing goes dead and the coil is actually run off of like a six volt system or a separate circuit entirely. As you can tell there are a couple different ways to do it. I really like this setup. A lot of people do but if you're looking for complete simplicity then you can go with the original setup and skip this thing entirely. Hopefully you found this video entertaining or maybe even learned something and if you did give it a subscribe, a like, maybe leave me a comment below and uh, make sure to check out my other videos like over here and over here. Hopefully they're over there. If they're not, well, you'll just have to imagine it. For me, I'm just going to play with this for a while. I wonder what would happen if I put a banana in that. Hmm. I'm going to get a banana.